This is chapter three, lecture one. We're on page 25 in the notes, and we are going to discuss matter and the properties and changes that it undergoes. Remember, we talked about substances. It's matter with a uniform and constant composition. And this relates to the states of matter. There are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gases. Solids have a definite shape and volume. The particles are tightly packed, and it will not take the shape of the container in which it is placed. Solids are incompressible, but they can expand a little bit when heated. So examples are concrete, wax, and the element gold. We draw particle diagrams for the phases, which are just a bunch of circles. And in the solid phase, we draw the circles so that they are touching each other. In an equation, we will show a solid with the formula for the substance and then an S in parentheses for the solid phase. So H2OS is ice. Liquids flow and take the shape of the container they're found in, but they have a definite volume. The particles slide by each other, which allows the liquid to flow. Liquids are incompressible and also expand slightly when heated. Examples are water, blood, and the element mercury. A particle diagram cannot show a uniform pattern because the particles are in constant motion sliding by each other. In an equation, we would show H2O for the formula and a cursive L for the liquid phase. So H2O L is water. Gases take the shape of the container that they're found in. The particles are far apart, so a gas can be easily compressed. Examples are air, helium, and carbon dioxide. Gas. A particle diagram will show the particles far apart. And this, we would show H2O, G for the gas. If a substance is normally a liquid at room temperature, and we heat it up and turn it into a gas, it is considered to be a vapor. So water in the gaseous phase is water vapor. Bromine is normally a liquid at room temperature. So if we heat it up into the gas phase, it is called bromine vapor. But carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature. So we just call that carbon dioxide gas. Turn to page 26. When we talk about the physical properties of matter, we're talking about a characteristic of matter that can be observed without changing the sample's composition.
an extensive physical property depends on the amount of substance present. Mass is an extensive property. You cannot determine what something is by its mass. Length is an extensive property. Volume is an extensive property. Just because a liquid has a volume of 20 milliliters, you cannot identify what that liquid is. But an intensive property is independent of the amount of substance present. Density is an intensive property. The density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. If you have an object and its density is 2.7, grams per centimeter cubed, it must be aluminum. Boiling point is an intensive property. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If you have a liquid and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius, it must be water. A chemical property is the ability or inability of a substance to combine or change into another substance. Iron reacts with oxygen in the air to form rust. Rust is iron oxide. Rusting is a chemical property of iron. But iron does not react when placed in nitrogen gas but it is still a chemical property of iron. In discussing properties, we have to be at the same conditions of temperature and pressure. Water can be a liquid at one temperature and a solid at a different temperature. So what was developed was standard temperature and pressure, known as STP. Standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees Celsius, not room temperature, zero degrees Celsius, and one atmosphere of pressure, which is the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level. Another way of saying zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. Remember Kelvin is Celsius plus 273. And we have another unit which we're going to look at, which is the kilopascal, 101.3 kPa's, but we won't worry about that yet. So properties change at different temperatures and pressures. So a physical property of copper, like a penny, is that it's reddish brown. It can be easily pounded into sheets, and it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. Some chemical properties of copper are, it forms copper carbonate. It reacts with nitric acid. It forms a deep blue solution when in contact with ammonia. So we have to understand the difference between a physical and a chemical property, but we will discuss this more in class. So that is it for today, and we will see you in class.